Welcome back to the channel. As you can tell by the title of the video, and I'm sure many of us already know and have filled out our brackets, it is March Madness season. The NCAA tournament kicks off on Thursday, March 21st with the round of 64. Currently, I'm filming this on Wednesday during the Colorado-Boise State play-in game, which is the last of the first four. So in a matter of a couple hours from... The time I'm filming this, we'll have our full field of 64 and we'll be ready to go for the first round of the tournament. To start, we're going to take a look at the West and the Midwest brackets because that Colorado and Boise State game is still going on. My second video will be on the East and the South brackets once we have a full completed bracket. But without further ado, we'll get started with the West and the Midwest. First things first, I'll be going with the one seeds. I know in recent years, the 16 seeds have been playing the one seeds tougher, but realistically, I don't think Wagner or Grambling really stand much of a shot. Purdue lost to a 16 seed last year. I don't think they allowed that to happen. And Wagner only has seven scholarship players available for them. So I don't think they have the depth to match North Carolina, let alone the talent or ability to compete with North Carolina for an entire game. So we're going to rock with the one seeds to start. Then we'll move on to the West bracket with the 8 versus 9 matchup. This is the first game of the field of 64 first round between Mississippi State and Michigan State. We take a look at the preview here we'll see that the leading scorer for each team is averaging about 17 to 18 points. And as you can see, number nine seeds have won 13 of 20 meetings with number eight seeds in the past five years, which is interesting. Um, I am leaning towards Michigan State here, looking at their numbers. Michigan State's averaging about 73 points per game. They're giving up about 66 Mississippi State is similar. They're scoring a little bit higher with about 75 points per game, but they're giving up around 69 points per game. Mississippi State isn't as efficient on offense. They only shoot 45% to Michigan State's 46. They shoot 32.5% from three to Michigan State's 36. And they shoot 72.3% from the free throw line which is better than Michigan State's 70.6. Mississippi State's also the better rebounding team as they rebound 38. As they average about 38 rebounds per game to Michigan State's 34. And MSU only turns the ball over 9.8 times per game to Mississippi State's 13 turnovers per game. So I'm going to give a slight edge here to Michigan State. I think they're... Championship and tournament pedigree, their experience with Coach Izzo, and I think they're playing better basketball as of late. I'm going to rock with Michigan State for Game 1. Then we move to St. Mary's versus Grand Canyon. St. Mary's won the West Coast Conference, which is also famous for having Gonzaga as a member of that conference. In fact, they beat Gonzaga in the conference championship. So... St. Mary's is definitely a high-quality basketball team. Grand Canyon's not too shabby either. Grand Canyon's going to be able to put the ball in the hoop. They average about 80 points a game. They shoot the ball decently well with 46.5% from the field and 34.5% from three, and they're about 75% from the free throw line. St. Mary's is also pretty efficient with about 47% from the field, 35.5% from three, and they're not as good from the free throw line at 68%. They take care of the basketball. They only turn the ball over about 10 times a game to Grand Canyon's 12. And they have 39.5 rebounds per game to Grand Canyon's 38. So rebounding-wise, they're pretty comparable. St. Mary's is much tougher defensively. They only average about 58 points allowed per game. They hold their opponents to under 40% from the field. They only give up 27.5 rebounds, and they force almost 11 turnovers a game. Grand Canyon, not sh not too shabby on defense, but they're... Nowhere near St. Mary's. They give up 67 points per game. They allow 44% from the field, and they give up about 32.5 rebounds per game. Because of those numbers, and I think St. Mary's is definitely the better basketball team here, we're going to move with St. Mary's on to the next round. Now, this next matchup has been a popular upset pick 
I feel like, of many. A lot of people are not uh, buying into Alabama's hype, and rightfully so. They have not looked great to end the season, but they can score the ball in bunches, and they don't play the greatest defense, but what they don't play on defense, they make up for on offense. They're averaging over 90 points per game. Charleston's averaging over 80 points per game, so they're going to be able to put the ball in the basket alongside Alabama, but I don't think they have the firepower that Alabama has or the talent or the uh, the wear and tear that Alabama's gone through throughout the season. I think Alabama playing the SEC has faced a lot tougher competition, so I think they should be ready to go for this first-round matchup, and I think they take it over Charleston. Now moving on to Clemson versus New Mexico, a 6 seed versus an 11 seed. Clemson and New Mexico are both very similar. They, New Mexico has the edge offensively. They score more per game. They aren't as efficient as Clemson, but they're the better rebounding team, and they take care of the basketball better. Defensively, they're better than Clemson. They give up slightly less points per game. Similar field goal percentage allowed. Similar rebounds, but they do force 14 turnovers a game to Clemson's nine. So I'm going to go with New Mexico in an 11-seed upset here. I think they're going to pressure Clemson. They're going to put the po- put points up on the board, and they're going to cause Clemson to kind of panic as the higher seed. Clemson may feel a little bit of pressure. And I think New Mexico is a little under I think they maybe could have been a 10 or a 9 seed. So we're going to rock with New Mexico in the 11-seed upset against 6 Clemson. Then as we move on to Baylor versus Colgate, a 3 versus a 14. Again, Colgate has been picked by some to be a popular upset pick. I don't buy it. I think Baylor offensively is one of the top-tier teams in the tournament. They're averaging almost 80 points a game. They're pretty efficient from the field, almost 50% from the field, and almost 40% from three. They're solid from the free throw line, and they take all right care of the ball, about 12 turnovers per game. Colgate averages about 10 less points per game. They are almost as efficient with 47% from the field and 36% from three, but they struggle from the free throw line at 68%, and they only average 10.6 turnovers per game, which is almost two better than Baylor. Defensively, Baylor struggles, I guess, from a points allowed perspective, and they allow their opponents to shoot a respectable 45% from the field. Um... I think this is where the Colgate's going to be able to keep the game close. They're going to play good defense. They only allow about 40% from the field in the regular season, and they only give up 63 points per game. However, I don't think Colgate has the firepower to match Baylor's offense. I think Colgate can keep it close for maybe a half. Maybe, you know, into 10 minutes in the second half, I think Baylor pulls away late, and they win the game uh without having to uh, kind of stress at the end. So we're going to go with Baylor over Colgate. Then we got the 7 versus 10 matchup between Dayton and Nevada. I like Nevada here. I'll be completely honest. I think both of these teams are very, very similar when you look at the numbers. Defensively, they both give up about 67 points per game. They both score about 75 points per game. They shoot the ball extremely similarly from the field. Dayton has a slight edge in three-point percentage, but... I don't put much weight into that because, you know, any team can get hot at any point in the tournament. And typically when a team's within like a point or two of three-point percentage, they're very comparable. Defensively, again, similar. I think Nevada averages slightly more turnovers for us per game so they can pressure Dayton a little bit more. Personally, I, I just like Nevada. I've watched both teams throughout the season. Uh, This is more of a field pick because of how similar both teams are to one another. And I'm going to go with Nevada here. Then the last game in the round of 64 in the West bracket is Arizona versus Long Beach State. I'm going to keep it nice and simple and sweet here. Arizona is a better team. Long Beach State is on a little bit of a miracle run. They fired their coach before their conference tournament. And they were able to put a couple wins together in order to win their conference tournament and get an automatic bid. But Arizona is by far the better team, and we're going to go with Arizona. Now, before we move on to the Midwest bracket, we'll go through our round of 32 picks. Starting with North Carolina versus Michigan State. Um, I did 
say I like Michigan State against Mississippi State because of Coach Izzo's experience and Michigan State playing better as of late. But North Carolina is an equal blue blood to Michigan State. I think North Carolina has a lot more talent. I think they'll be able to rest their guys a little bit more. Um, potentially could look ahead to the winner of this game with Wagner being a 16 seed. I think North Carolina handles them quite easily. And I'm going to go with North Carolina here to move on to the Sweet 16 over Michigan State. Now, this next game is a clash of styles. St. Mary's is going to be able to put the ball in the basket, but not nearly at the clip that Alabama will. But St. Mary's plays very aggressive defense, and they limit their opponents' opportunities to score. Alabama has a very up-paced tempo, and I think with St. Mary's ability to kind of pressure opponents' offenses, I think Alabama could struggle with that. I do think Alabama has more talent than St. Mary's. I think they're more athletic um, in terms of NBA talent. Alabama's got it in spades. But I think St. Mary's is the better team. I think Alabama likes to play a lot of one-on-one ball, and they just take threes and live and die by it. So if they if St. Mary's can run them off the three-point line and you know expose Alabama's lack of defense and put up 70 to 80 points and hold Alabama to 65, 70 points, I think St. Mary's wins this game. So I'm going to go St. Mary's to move on to the Sweet 16 to play North Carolina. Then we got an 11 versus 3 matchup in round 32 between New Mexico and Baylor. Again, Baylor's very good offensively. New Mexico is not too shabby either. They also play very stout defense and are able to turn their opponents over. Um, I think I'm very high on New Mexico, but I'm also very high on Baylor. So this is a bit of a tough tough pick if we look at the preview that's offered by espn we'll see that some kind of notable results baylor has beaten byu beaten iowa state which looks like a really good win now they kept it close with houston they kept it close with kansas and a couple other of these teams and they were able to beat kansas whereas uh new mexico has beaten san diego state beaten utah state beaten colorado state all tournament teams boise's playing the playing game They beat Boise, and they have beaten San Diego State twice. So I don't think New Mexico has played quite the schedule Baylor has. That's definitely for sure looking at their notable results. Um, Because they're similar, I think I'm going to go with Baylor here to beat New Mexico. But I think it's a close game, and I would not be surprised if New Mexico is able to pull an upset to head to the Sweet 16. Then we'll move on to the last round of 32 game for the West Bracket between Nevada and Arizona. I think Arizona is, again, a very high-quality basketball team. I do like Nevada. Nevada has quite the ability to score the ball. They shoot the ball very well. But kind of similar to my reasoning in the Baylor game with the teams being somewhat similar, I think Arizona's the better team compared to Nevada. I don't think they're nearly um, close to each other as New Mexico and Baylor are. Don't get me wrong, Nevada is a good team. I like them a lot. But Arizona's schedule is definitely help them out when it comes to playing in close games like this, which I expect Nevada to keep it close for a while in this game. But ultimately, Arizona's got better talent, and I think they're going to learn from the couple losses they had at the end of the season, and they're going to right the ship, and they're going to get themselves a berth to the Sweet 16. Now we'll move on to the Midwest bracket. Again, we've already picked Purdue as the one seed, and... I'm going to skip down here to Tennessee. I like Tennessee. St. Peter's, don't get me wrong, they have upset in the past. I don't think they have it in them this year. Tennessee's got NBA talent. they got a top 10 pick in Dalton Connect. They put the ball in the basket. Um, And playing in the SEC, incredibly tough schedule. I think they've got what it takes to get past St. Peter's. Um, But with that being said, taking a look at the 8-9 matchup between Utah State and TCU, um, these two teams are almost identical when you look at their numbers. So taking a look at the preview, I mean, TCU playing in the Big 12 has a bit of an advantage on uh, some teams that they've played. They've beaten the one seed Houston. They've beaten Baylor um, and a lot of close losses to, uh, to Baylor, eight points, um, and a two-point loss to Kansas, one-point loss to Iowa State. Uh, TCU definitely has the edge in – schedule uh strength of schedule and if we take a look here like 
said both teams score about 79, 80 points a game. They give up similar points per game. Um, Utah State is 2-0 and against top 25 teams, but those top 25 teams happen to be in their conference. So I think once they get into a different style of play in Big 12 basketball, I'm going to rock with TCU here. It's not, it, Technically, it's an upset with the 9 seed, but I think TCU um, is going to help themselves by playing their tough conference schedule. And I think they've just got more experience when it comes to playing in these close games and beating higher caliber teams. So we're going to go TCU here uh, to move on to play Purdue. Now this next game, McNeese is a very sexy pick for an upset. Again, 5 versus 12. 12 seeds historically have had some success against 5 seeds and upsets. Uh, McNeese, 30 wins. One of the few teams in the country that have reached 30 win mark. Uh, their notable games come against Michigan, who is not great. At the time, it looked like a good win, but Michigan ended up, you know, 8 and 25 or something like that. So, not ultimately the best win ever. Um, but they do have a win or two against a couple tournament teams with UAB and VCU getting snubbed on the tournament. They were a bubble team, so they're tournament caliber. But if you take a look at Gonzaga here, they've played Purdue, who's a one seed. UConn's a one seed. St. Mary's is a five seed. Kentucky's a three seed. They've played St. Mary's three different times. They beat them once. Um, I think Gonzaga has plenty of star power and firepower to match McNeese's ability to score the ball, as you can see. McNeese, defensively, they're very good. But I don't think they've seen the firepower that Gonzaga's going to throw at them. And they have yet to play a team in the top 25. So take those numbers kind of with a grain of salt. Um, they definitely can put the ball in the hoop and they can play stout defense. I think they give Gonzaga a run for a half, maybe um, 30 minutes out of the 40 total minutes. But um, I think I'm going to go with Gonzaga here. And I don't think that they'll be the number 12 seed that upsets a number 5 seed this year. Next, we got Kansas and Samford. Um, this is going to be an interesting matchup. Kansas is out. McCuller, um, who is one of their star players, as you can see, Kevin McCuller is their leading scorer at 18.3 points per game. Hunter Dickinson should be playing, though, according to Bill Self. He should be good to go, which is a huge boost for Kansas. But if we take a look at the numbers here, Samford's able to put the ball in the basket. Uh, Kansas is going to defend decently well, but um, I think the cohesiveness and the chemistry without Kevin McCullough is going to be huge. I don't know how they're going to play. They did not look great in the Big 12 tournament without McCullough or Dickinson. Luckily, they get Dickinson back, so this game's kind of a toss-up for me. Samford's numbers do impress me. They shoot almost 50% from the field, almost 40% from three, uh, they don't take great care of the ball on offense, but they make up for it by averaging almost 17 turnovers forced per game on the defensive end. And they score about 86 points per game. Um, I'm going to go with Sanford here. I think Kansas being down their leading scorer could lead to a little, um, for a lack of better words, inability to score. I think they'll be able to score, but I think their go-to scorer not being able to play is going to put them in a tough spot at times. And as Sanford goes up at any point in the second half, Kansas is going to be looking to a guy to score, and that guy's not going to be on the court. So I think Sanford pulls off the upset, uh, both two very good basketball teams, but we're going to go Sanford to play Gonzaga in the round of 32. Next, we have South Carolina taking on Oregon. Uh, Oregon was able to win the Pac-12 tournament to get themselves a bid into the NCAA tournament. I think without winning that tournament, they would not have been included in the field of 64. So luckily for them, they were able to uh, come back against Arizona and then uh, notch a win in the Pac-12 championship game. So Oregon's definitely got some momentum. South Carolina has been very solid this year, though. Uh, I've, I'm very impressed by South Carolina when it comes to their – ability to take care of the basketball they're not the most efficient team from a 
shooting perspective. But again, Oregon has an ability to turn the ball over at times. They have the momentum. They shoot decently well from the court, uh, 45% from the field, about 33.5% from three. But I think South Carolina playing in the SEC, I'm very high on the SEC this year. I think they've got a lot of high-quality teams that are going to go a long way in the tournament. I think South Carolina's better team here, and we're going to go with South Carolina to move on. Then we've got Creighton taking on Akron in a 3 versus 14 seed matchup. I think Creighton is by far the better team here. The Akron played in the Akron played in the MAC, so not the highest level of competition, and they kind of got lucky to get into the tournament as they were down one with a couple seconds left and Kent State followed them to send them to the line where they were able to take a 1 point lead with, you know, a second or two left in the game. So they're fortunate there. Um, I think this pick's pretty simple. Um, Akron maybe gives them a game for a half. I doubt it. I think Creighton wins big, and we're going to go with Creighton and move on to the next round. Now we've got Texas versus Colorado State to round out the round of 64 in the Midwest bracket. Texas is coming out of the Big 12. Colorado State beat Virginia in the play-in game where that was a little bit of a boring game with Virginia struggling to put the ball in the basket but a lot of people are blaming Virginia's inability to score I think we have to take a look at Colorado State's defensive ability as well I think Colorado State is one of the top teams in this tournament when it comes to defense and offensively um, they're you know middle of the pack to below average but they make up for it with defense Texas, on the other hand, they're going to score close to 80 points a game. Defensively, they do all right. They're able to force 13 turnovers a game, and they hold their opponents to under 70 points per game, just barely at 69.9 points per game. Um, this game, I don't really know. Colorado State could come out and shoot lights out and keep in it with Texas. And on the defensive end, if, they, if Colorado State's able to cause Texas some trouble, I, I, I like Colorado State here, but... Um, on the other end, if if this game turns into a track meet and Texas is pushing the pace, trying to put up points, I don't think Colorado State's going to be able to keep up with Texas. So two definitely different game scripts there. Um, one favors each team. But this is kind of a pick em for me, and I'm going to go with Texas. I'm going to be safe. I'm going to take the team that's played a tougher schedule. They've played better teams than Colorado State, and they've beaten better teams than Colorado State as we look at the preview. Their notable wins, they've beaten Baylor, they've beaten TCU, who's a tournament team, and they've played teams like Iowa State and Houston close. So I'm going to rock with Texas here to move on to the next round. Now taking a look at the round of 32. Um, I'm going to kind of speed through this because I, I gave you guys the rundown on kind of each team. Purdue versus TCU. I think Purdue's the better team. Zach Eadie's going to be the two-time player of the year. And Braden Smith, their point guard, is a veteran guard. Veteran guards win in March. And Matt Painter's been to the tournament his fair share of times. He hasn't exactly had the most success at times. But with the national player of the year and Zach Eadie, you've got a big force in the middle of the floor. He's going to grab rebounds. He's going to score 20-plus points a game. Give me Purdue to overwhelm TCU and move on to the Sweet 16. Uh, similar to Purdue, Gonzaga has a lot of talent. Samford is going to have a hard-fought game against Kansas, and they're going to have some momentum going into this game, but I think similar to McNeese, Gonzaga is going to overwhelm them. Gonzaga is, I, I don't want to call them a Cinderella because they've been a one seed for the last however many years. They used to be a Cinderella, um, but that's kind of they've kind of outgrown that title. And even though they're a five seed, I think they're one of the better teams in this tournament. I'm going to go with Gonzaga to move on over Samford to the Sweet 16. South Carolina and Creighton, this should be a hell of a game. I think South Carolina can give Creighton a run for their money. Um, ultimately, I do think Creighton is the better team of the two. I think South Carolina has some shown some glimpses of greatness, but they've also shown a lot of inability to... Um, score at times and 
they've gotten overwhelmed by teams like Auburn and other teams in the SEC. Um, they got hot really early in the year, got them to almost, I think, crack the top 10 in the AP polls. But as of late, they haven't struggled. They haven't played as well. They've struggled a little bit as of late. And Creighton is, uh, you know, has struggled a little bit late too, but I think they're overall the better team. They've given UConn a run for their money. They played Marquette, two, a two seed and a one seed. Um, I'm going to take Creighton here to move on over South Carolina. And Tennessee is the better team here against Texas. Again, I don't even know if Texas is going to move on. That game was a tough one for me to pick. One of the toughest on the first round for me to pick. So we're going to rock with Tennessee, the safe pick. I know they're going to make it past St. Peter's, so we're going to pick them to move on to the Sweet 16. So my Sweet 16 matchups are set for the West and the Midwest region. In the West, we got North Carolina, the one seed, taking on St. Mary's, the five seed. And we got Arizona, the two seed, taking on Baylor, the three seed. In the Midwest, we got Purdue, the one seed, taking on Gonzaga, the five seed. And in our other Sweet 16 matchup in the Midwest, we've got the three seed, Creighton, taking on the two seed, Tennessee. Now, this is a bit chalk. Um, very rarely does this happen where it's, you know, the top five seeds or whatever uh, it may be move on to the Sweet 16. I'm sure there will be an upset in there. Maybe New Mexico beats Baylor. Nevada beats Arizona. Maybe Sanford can pull it off against Gonzaga. I don't know. One of those teams may win, um, but looking at it on paper, I like these teams to move on, and I like my Sweet 16 matchups. Uh, that's going to be it for this video. Again, I'll have another video coming out going over the south and the east brackets up here. Um, so stay on the lookout for that. It should be released shortly after this one. But we're going to wrap it up here, and I'll see you guys in the next video.